Xuan Yu thanked the senior for his assistance. He confessed that he found forging to be quite fascinating, a craft that felt both powerful and magical. The senior warmly welcomed him to the Blacksmith Association. Xuan Yu's eyes brightened as he asked if he could officially join now, to which the senior readily agreed. He introduced himself as Yang Yingming and urged him to work hard now that he was a part of their community. However, he continued, they were responsible for acquiring their own materials, and Xuan Yu would need to find himself a suitable mentor. Without missing a beat, he offered his services, as he told him that he was a third-level forge master and was more than willing to teach him at a fair price. Xuan Yu blinked in surprise at the mention of money and thought that explained why it had been so easy for him to join the association. He politely told Ying Ming that he needed some time to think about the offer and quickly excused himself as he stated that he had to go for now. As he turned to leave, Ying Ming hurried after him and offered to sweeten the deal with a discount. He added that Xuan Yu could even have three lessons for free. He also promised that once he reached level four, he wouldn't charge him extra. Once outside, Xuan Yu's mind swirled with thoughts. He decided that seeking advice from his teacher, Tang Jenhua, would be the wisest course of action for now. In the interstellar space, Jenhua stood in front of Xuan Yu. He told Xuan Yu that forging was a good path and affirmed that the senior who suggested it was right. If he truly possessed a gift in this area, once he reached level 5, he could become self-sufficient and maybe even secure a steady income from his skills. He also promised to support Xuan Yu and meant to encourage him with his words. But Xuan Yu, sensing the conversation turned too serious, suddenly steered it in another direction. He asked the teacher if he would care to accompany him to the Sea God Lake for cultivation. Zhen Hua was surprised at this sudden invitation. He turned away and said Xuan Yu should go on without him. Xuan Yu accepted his response and replied with an okay. Jenhua suggested him to stay at the lake longer if no one asked him to leave. As Xuan Yu left, Jenhua stood still as he thought about his last visit to the Sea God Lake. The memory made him frown slightly, as the old pain and wounds from that time still bothered him. He thought about Xuan Yu and recalled how much life energy the boy had absorbed during their last visit. He wondered if he had managed to process it all and realized why the life school was so interested in him, given Xuan Yu's strong connection to life energy. At Sea God Lake, Tang Yue focused on the two figures in the center. In the middle of the lake, Xuan Yu reminded Lei to hurry and told him they couldn't afford to waste any more time, but even with the rush, Lei seemed unusually calm, and he even mentioned how comfortable it felt there. Both of them were surrounded by strong energy and were deeply focused on their cultivation. Lei observed that although golden fatty Tian had used up most of his life energy the day before, it was now fully restored. He brought out golden fatty Tian and told it to drink as much water as possible as he stressed how valuable it was. The gorilla eagerly jumped in and drank the water with excitement. Its eyes sparkled, but Lei realized it might drown in the water and called out its name. He then joined in and challenged the gorilla to a fun contest to see who could drink more. As they enjoyed their contest, Xuan Yu was focused on sensing changes in his bloodline. This time, with the help of the gemstone, the fusion of his two bloodlines achieved a smooth blend and ended their previous discord. A comforting warmth spread through his body as his life energy flowed smoothly into the blood vortex. This energy quickly transformed into strong bloodline power, which nourished his every muscle and bone. He felt a deep sense of renewal, his entire being revitalized by the transformation. Meanwhile, Lei lay on the water's surface, exhausted from drinking so much. He reflected that only yellow insignias could be traded for a maximum of 20 white insignias, with one white insignia equal to one liter of Sea God Lake water. They needed at least 60 liters to cover the cost. As he looked at Golden Fatty Qian, he ironically noted that it had already drunk more than the amount covered by three yellow insignias. Anything more Golden Fatty Qian drank felt like a bonus. As he got up, he felt an unfamiliar sensation. As he inspected his hand, he noticed a subtle but noticeable improvement in his body's functions. He wondered if the gorilla was still benefiting him while absorbing a lot of life energy. He realized that as long as they avoided fighting among them, Golden Fatty Qian took almost nothing from him. This led him to think the gorilla might be a natal summoning beast. He smiled and encouraged Golden Fatty Qian to grow faster. At the edge of the lake, Yue sensed an intruder in the night and noted that it was the first time in many years someone had dared to approach. When Lei realized their presence was discovered, he swam over to Yue and assured him that Golden Fatty Qian was his soul spirit and they were one. Ye, however, insisted that a soul spirit was an energy form, not a physical entity, and emphasized the difference between the two. Xuan Yu tried to smooth things over and explained that Old Shu already knew about Golden Fatty Qian's nature, but Yue demanded three more yellow insignias or ordered them to leave immediately. Xuan Yu apologized and asked to finish their cultivation. Yue sighed and decided to let it go this time and allowed them to continue. He expressed curiosity about how much Golden Fatty Qian could drink. Lei encouraged Golden Fatty Qian to drink even more water to show him. 
As the gorilla drank the water quickly, Yuo watched with amusement and surprise. The creature's ability to drink a liter in just a few swallows made the three yellow insignias seem like a big loss. Lei kept urging it to drink more, but Yue intervened and told him to stop as the gorilla might overeat and be harmed. After a while, Lei collapsed on the ground as his stomach bulged from all the water he had drunk. He groaned as he said he couldn't drink anymore and felt like he was going to vomit. Xuan Yu stood next to him, turned to Yue and asked to borrow a trolley, while Yue remarked that Lei would surely be remembered as the least welcome visitor there. In Eternal Sky City, with the full moon shining brightly in the night sky, Tang Lei sat on a building's crane as he looked out over the vast city. Tang Lei was deeply lost in thought as he tried to figure out the mysterious person who had been calling him. The calls suddenly stopped, which left him confused and curious. He felt a strong urge to get a closer look at what was happening, but more importantly, he realized that there was someone else there too. In the Eternal Sky City, a flash of pink light streaked across the surroundings and filled the air with tension. Wang Tianyu sensed something strange and looked around until he spotted an unexpected visitor, Tang Lei, who calmly stood in the distance. Lei's gaze, however, was fixed on Xuan Yu, who was deeply absorbed in his cultivation. He marveled at how Xuan Yu had grown, now a strong young man. A deep joy filled him as he watched the boy's progress, a feeling so pure that it almost made him want to reach out and pat his head or hug him. But Tian Yu's arrival interrupted his thoughts. Tian Yu coldly questioned his presence, even though he found some pleasure in the visit. Lei greeted him politely. Tian Yu looked at Lei's striking appearance and found it hard to believe someone could look so good. Lei reassured him that he meant no harm and was just observing. However, Tian Yu remained cautious and insisted that Lei accompany him if he truly had no ill intentions. The two then flew off into the sky together. Under the old branches of the eternal tree, a quiet murmur started. One voice asked if what they had seen was real. Another wondered if the figure they saw had really come back. The first voice confirmed it was indeed him and noted the changes in his look and presence. They were amazed he was still alive and wondered about another important person. The voice reassured them that they had been told he wouldn't die easily. Old Shu, sitting under the ancient tree, sensed the moment's importance and silenced the voices with his presence. The voices noticed Old Shu and turned to the eternal tree, which seemed to call out with ancient power. As Old Shu focused, a bright green aura came from him and showed the tree's mystical power. After a moment, he calmly acknowledged the situation and told the voices to step back. He explained that the eternal tree said they should not meet him now and warned that waking him could cause serious trouble. The voices asked why this was needed, especially since it seemed he had returned. Old Shu firmly said they had to follow the Eternal Tree's guidance and urged them to respect its decision. The voices showed they were confused and struggled to understand what was happening. In the sky, Lei and Tianyu faced off with each other. Lei greeted Tianyu with a smile, introduced himself, and said he was happy to meet him. Tianyu introduced himself as the deputy dean of Shrek Academy's Sea God Pavilion and asked why Lei was there. Lei explained that he had come to visit an old friend and nothing more. Tian Yu asked if this friend was Lan Xuan Yu and wanted to know what their relationship was. Lei replied that Xuan Yu was an old friend. Tian Yu then asked how they had met. Lei said he was a singer, and they had met at a concert where they immediately clicked. He added that he was visiting his home planet and decided to drop by when he heard Xuan Yu was there. He assured Tian Yu that he meant no trouble and didn't want to stay too long. Tian Yu considered this and thought that a famous singer might be telling the truth, but he remained doubtful. Suddenly, Tian Yu's aura turned fierce and pink, and he said he didn't believe Lei's story. His tone turned cold as he challenged Lei to a fight. Lei, surprised by the challenge, asked why it was necessary. Tian Yu ignored him, charged forward with his fist ready, and said that being at Shrek meant following its rules. Lei calmly caught Tian Yu's fist and with a strong push, sent him flying backward. The impact was strong, and Tian Yu noted the power of Lei's strength. He was amazed and wondered if he could match it. Just as things were getting tense, a familiar voice asked for calm. Old Shu appeared, and Tian Yu was shocked to see him. Old Shu shared with Tian Yu that Le posed no threat as the Eternal Tree had affirmed this. Tian Yu was taken aback as he was surprised at the realization that the Eternal Tree was familiar with Tang Lei. Old Shu, however, clarified that he did not have complete certainty. The Eternal Tree had merely indicated that he was not an enemy. He suggested that Lei was free to stay or leave, as he posed no danger to their academy. Tian Yu, still hesitant, began to question the trustworthiness of the Eternal Tree's judgment. Old Shu, however, extended a warm welcome to Li and invited him to explore Shrek Academy freely and assured him that no one would hinder his movements. Lei expressed his gratitude to Old Shu. He was then seen outside Xuan Yu's dorm as he roamed around. The following day, Xuan Yu's gaze landed on Ying Ming. As the senior approached, he pondered whether Xuan Yu had made a decision, 
and was officially starting his forging journey that day. Xuan Yu questioned whether he could learn independently, as he noted the presence of books on forging, and expressed his desire to explore and master the craft on his own. Ying Ming observed Xuan Yu's ambition and offered to guide him to the forging room. As they walked together, he presented Xuan Yu with a book titled Introduction to Forging as a gift and encouraged him to delve into it and explore the knowledge within. As they entered the forging room, he advised Xuan Yu to start with ordinary iron bars rather than rare metals as he pointed to the equipment. He explained that mastering the forging of basic iron into steel was essential before attempting rare materials. He reassured him that he would be around and instructed him to call for help if needed. Xuan Yu thanked him, and as Ying Ming left, he started reading the book and thought about the challenges of working with ordinary iron. He felt the energy from the common material was less strong compared to rare metals, which caused him some frustration at the thought of achieving half the results with double the effort. Suddenly, a voice echoed as someone suggested that this might not have been the case, as those who could forge divine artifacts with ordinary iron were the real craftsmen. Xuan Yu's eyes widened as he turned to see Tang Lei standing there with a warm smile. He ran to greet his uncle and left the book forgotten on the ground. He inquired about his unexpected visit. Lei explained that he was visiting for a show on the planet and sensed Xuan Yu's aura, so he decided to stop by. He added that this was a remarkable institution. Xuan Yu mentioned that it didn't compare to his uncle's own abilities and praised his previous achievements. He then questioned the meaning behind his comment about forging divine artifacts with ordinary iron and wondered if he could forge himself. Lei, uncertain of his own capabilities, said that he had casually made the remark, then picked up a hammer and started to feel its weight. He asked Xuan Yu for permission to demonstrate, which Xuan Yu eagerly granted. As he quickly swung the hammer, a burst of energy surrounded the iron bar. Xuan Yu watched in amazement as the bar responded to his uncle's touch and shrank significantly after just one hit. A yellow circle of light surrounded his uncle, who then effortlessly drew the bar towards him. To Xuan Yu's surprise, the bar felt as soft as dough in his uncle's hand. Suddenly, a flash of bright mixed colors joined the yellow light as Lei skillfully worked on it. The colors blended with the bar, making it shrink again. Zhuan Yu wondered about the colorful flash as the bar returned to its original shape, now surrounded by a faint, dragon-shaped glow 